I'd like to call to order the Town of Wellington Inland Wetland and Water Course Commission. Uh, today, September 23rd, 2024. The time is now 7.32 for our regular uh, monthly meeting. Uh, first order of business is call to order. Uh, all uh, commission members are present. There are no alternates to, uh, to be seated. Next order of business, uh, application to be received. There are currently none on the agenda. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from August 26, 2024. I'll give the uh, commissioners a few moments to look over those. If there are any questions, uh, those can be raised or any corrections. I'll move approval of the minutes of August 26th, 2024. Has the rest of the commission had an, uh, an opportunity to review those uh, minutes? I have. I didn't have any uh, issues with anything. Mr. Drobny? Yes, we're all set. We have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes from August 26, 2024. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second it. Go ahead, Ralph. Sorry, Mark. All, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Abstentions? Being missed have been approved. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing, which we do not. New business. Timber harvest application TH24 6, selected timber harvest at 10 Jared Sparks Road, map block lot 23 025 00, owner T. Hall, applicant C. Lemery. Good afternoon or good evening, everybody. My name is Christopher Lemery. Today I'll be proposing a harvest, a timber harvest at uh, 10 Jared Sparks Road for Tyler Hall there. Um, the harvest will be an area from around 16.8 acres, um, and the prescription for the harvest will be a selective harvest, harvesting unhealthy, disease, declining, and poorly formed species, um, and releasing sunlight to desirable species, as well as promoting new generation and lacking areas. Um, previous skid trails, along with new skid trails, will be placed where needed. Um, there will be one crossing, as you can see there in the map, uh, one single crossing involved with the timber harvest. Uh, bridge mats will be used for that crossing, timber bridge mats. Um, this crossing is over in an ephemeral slash intermediate intermittent stream, um, which comes through and into the next wetland, as you see there to the north. Um, and we'll be harvesting around 79 thousand board feet and 36 cords um, and all best management practices will be followed during the timber harvest. Uh, there will be trees removed within the um, within the upland review area and all trees to be removed will be were uh, was painted with orange paint and boundaries were marked with pink flagging. Any any questions? I'm happy to answer. Did you establish any buffer zone from the wetland boundaries at all? Uh, there is a slight a buffer zone for the housing there off to the north west. Um, and I would say that there's probably about a 10 or 15 foot buffer between these two wetlands um, or if you want to call that the other, the third wetland there, the mini wetland. 
I would say there's probably about 10 to 15 feet, um, give or take. Um, but there really wasn't a, a, um, target to put a buffer in between these wetlands as it is a, uh, a right to harvest within the wetlands. Well, we didn't harvest anything within the wetlands. We did harvest in the Upland Wood Review area, which is about 100 to 150 feet, um, according to the Connecticut DEP website. So we did harvest within the Upland Review area. How wide is that entering that uh, you plan uh, proposed on crossing? What was that? Go ahead again. How wide is that intermittent stream that you propose to cross? Oh, it's, um, I would say it's probably about three feet at the largest point. It's really not that big. The The area where I had, I had uh, put the place to crossing or to proposing to place the crossing has already has, uh, it's technically like a Ford crossing, but we're going to be using timber bridge mats. Um, in the previous harvest that have been done before on this property has used this area for crossing. It's kind of like a lower point. Um, and it's flat in the area. They ha you can tell from past evidence that they have used the crossing. Um, there are stones that have been placed there from a very long time ago, probably w when it was farmed or either harvested in the past. And what was your determination of the uh, property boundary on this property? Because it looks a little on the southeast, a little, little, little wavy. Yeah. Oh, so the wavy there, that's, uh, that's actually called, I'm sorry, then it put on the map. That's actually technically common road. So along with the deed and the road itself. Um, yeah. So that, that waviness is number one, uh, come from the, the Willington town GIS along with, it's just an actual, it's an old common road. It's just an old gravel road that was once a part of the town of Willington. Um, and there's actually a stone wall that runs along that. And I also referenced the deed to this property as well. So that southeastern portion of the property boundary that's bound by the stone wall. Common bridge. road. Common road. Yeah, it's, it should be, if you actually look it up on Google, I'm sorry that I didn't reference that there. That's, uh, that's my fault on there. But if you can, if you keep looking off to the Southeast, you see that it's like slightly, you can see a little road, but if you look it up on Google, there is a road called Common Road that goes down there. It's an old town road. I'm yeah, sorry. The road I left the town green at this point. Uh, it was used as access to the house, uh, the Clyde Hall house, if I remember correctly. Uh, it goes down deep down into the gully and comes up the other side and actually reappears at the other end um, on Jared Sparks Road. Used to be a bridge down there, washed out a long time ago. I'm assuming it's dirt at this point in time. Yeah, it's like slash dirt slash gravel. I mean, they have, there has, there is a house actually kind of uh, down Common Road off to the right that had maintained the, the road itself to actually get in and out, you know, obviously for snow purposes or whatever. Um, but then it does get pretty, pretty rocky and ruddy. Um, I, I never walked the entire road. I stopped at obviously at the the south or uh, the the western boundary there, uh, but I've never walked down the road rest of the way. But the owner did tell me that uh, that was one of the old town roads. So, so that's the deeded property boundary. Is that correct? That is yes. That is the deeded property boundary, um, and it also also references just to a stone wall that runs the entire uh, common road as well. Yes. Uh, I hate to interrupt, but is there any opportunity for comments for butters? I, I know this like the back of my hand. Once, once the commission is done asking questions, we'll ask for a poll. Is this, yep, yeah, I have also, I think uh, that may be Kevin Rodriguez that had asked that, is that correct? Yeah, well, let's follow yep. over okay. the Yep. Are there any uh, questions from the, uh, any other commissioners that um, wish to speak? Yes, one question. Is this the level portion before it dips down into the gully, or is there steep inclines on this uh, this area? Yes. Yep. So there is steep inclines 
off to the uh, the north uh, west pr uh, boundary there, but the south yeah. side of the property uh, on the south uh, side of the wetland there, that's kind of pretty pretty level. But there are steep spots off to the west there, um, and that's why we're having a hand crew come in here instead of a harvesting using a harvester. Okay. So you're going to skid uh, your material out? Yep, there will be a, a grapple skidder. Or sorry, there will be a forwarder um, after the cut down, the cut to length. It's a cut to length operation, and they'll be skidding it out to the landing there. You see on there, the, it's a red star yep. right where the old landing was, um, and then that's where the, the trucks will pick up the lugs. These um, previously established skid trails? Yep. Yeah, so those, the, so the, the, the one that comes in off to the right and left are previously established skid trails. And then the other three, like leading off trails are trails that need to be put in um, to gather the timber alongside of the western and the east boundary there. Um, but that that one kind of like circle, well, oblong shaped one would be the pre-existing skid trails that I had actually identified on the property. I'm sure there's other ones, but uh, it's pretty overgrown. Where you're putting in the skid trails, how steep is that area? Over on the east, or sorry, over on the west side, that's like I just like I said, uh, that that'll be the the steeper area. That's why you see it kind of goes up and then straight across. There is a kind of like a level or spot kind of by the other the other road going north. Um, and then as you see there in the second like turn off there, that goes up up a gully a little bit and then comes around up on a flatter area. Um, and you know the the loggers will also be out there helping me you know put it put it in wherever they need to these machines are the forwarder is pretty large so they kind of ride it where they need to safely and um, so they can do things efficiently so and you said most of that operation in the uh the western portion of the property is going to be done by hand correct well, it'll all be done hand by hand. It's a hand crew, but like I said, they just they use a forwarder to gather the log and pulling them out uh, to the forward uh, to the landing. Everything's going to be um, cut to length by hand on on the property, and then truck or skidded out to the landing, and then trucked off the common road. Are you planning to do anything to prevent erosion once you leave the site, given that uh, there yep. are some steep. Yep. So on the skid trails itself, there will be uh, oat seed spreaded um, to rent to hold the 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 soil intact, as well as hay um, spread out near the wetland crossing and anywhere that anywhere any steep spots. Um, so all of the skid trails would be laid out with a seed, and then some steeper spots will be laid out with hay. On on that on on post harvest close out uh, post harvest close out. Farther application material. For that, seems like you have a, a good plan and uh, post. Uh, harvest management. Are there any other questions or comments from the commission? I have none at the moment. Rodney? No. No. Not right now. Uh, open it up to there's some uh, members of the public here that would like to speak to the application. 
Yeah, I would. I'm Kevin Rodriguez. My property abuts the whole parcel. Yeah, just uh, name, name and, 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 and address for the record. 55 Common Road in Wellington. Okay. My wife and I own the lot that abuts to the east. And I have been in contact with Mr. Lemery, um, several emails, and I have concerns about how the property boundary on the east that abuts our lot has been, um, you know, marked. I went out there this weekend with the plan of the lot and the deed, and I marked our two boundaries, the boundary markers themselves, and I've requested of Mr. Lemery um, that we go out there, he and I, and he look at those boundaries and to ensure that they are respected. I do not give, give permission for any timber harvesting on my property. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could I look at your drawing? Sure. Yeah, this is a photocopy of the entire plan from the town. I have the plan. So, okay. could you explain to me what? Okay. With respect to this. Yes, first, for the record, um, Mr. Lemery earlier, I believe, indicated this red line was the property boundary and that went along Common Road. So this is the way this is denoted here along this gray line. You can't have this be common road and have that be common road. Right. So, so I believe this is an error right here. I don't think that's common road. I think this is, and Christopher, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said yes. earlier that the red boundary line represented common road, the dirt lane. Correct? Now uh, so here, let me just uh, let me just say that uh, if you take a look at the online G GIS there, so the old common the old common road has another long other road that uh, kind of like skiers off of it, and then if you see that straight line to the north, your boundary is actually that smaller. I have actually, if you take a look on the online GIS, there's actually a whole nother property where that squiggly line is on the other side of the road. It along it runs along side the um the other side of the road and then there's another stone wall and then there's someone else's property but then you're actually where that straight line where it begins straight where the deed had reference to um a virginia rail fence um a lot as well as i just found some other old fence line within the trees um so basically just use the deed and evidence on the ground um but it, go ahead and pull up that gis um, and your property is actually the property above that property that which does not have the road running alongside of it. This way. Um, and I've actually contacted. I have been in the whole map with the legend on it. I have been in contact with. I don't know what should be here. I have been in. I. I have been in contact with Kevin uh, over email, um, and we had agreed to um, figuring this out in the field. There is actually really no way to technically figure it out on, you know, over the meeting. We have to be out there together to really see what he means, see where the error is, um, depending on what his deed says and what uh, Tyler Hall deed says. Oh. Yep. So there you go. There's his property there. Right off. So see how Common Road kind of does follow that. And then there's another property below it. So he owns above it. And then there's another property that abuts the other side of the road. So I think how this fits. Do we get a spring aerial or a winter aerial? My guess is how this fits here is this is this approximately. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this would be where Common, you know, uh, Approximately, that's a guess. But that, that so sense. can I just jump in because I'm going to sprout some procedural gray hairs. Um, we're recording and the people that are online obviously can't see what's happening here. Right. So okay. the common road that is shown on the map that was presented is just a connection between the east and west portions of common road because they don't actually connect in, in person. Yeah, the and so yeah. what so you it's have- a ghost, It's a ghost tree. So not even, it's just the, the mapping, you know, whomever with the aerial, they just- drew a line between where both sections end and connected them. Okay. So what I'm showing here 
if you look at the GIS, which is what the applicant is referencing, is the actual sort of um, right away of common road. But if you but if you look at the GIS, the actual road itself stops not far. Well, the Im the improved far. part of the road oh, stops. Yeah. Yes, the improved part of the road stops. Yes, that's what I had referenced to earlier. What you mean is Thanks, the pavements. Mars. The road, correct. The yes, the travel, the travel the right. Lane. Right, but the, that dirt lane does not actually go all the way through the other portion of Common Road. You couldn't even, couldn't get a car through there. You can't get a well, car through there. Definitely, definitely not. You could only, no, definitely not. You can walk it. You can walk it. You could definitely walk it, put an ATV down it, but you might not get a truck down. Not at this point. So, and and I'm going to stop sharing this only because we're getting crazy, terrible audio, and it's it's hard to tell who's saying what. Um, but I think the the long and short of it is where this where this right of way is or isn't is sort of a separate issue. The commission isn't a surveyor. You aren't going to say, well, if it's here or it's not here, we're good with this and not with that. Our requirements are that the boundaries be flagged. He's saying that, or, or marked, he's saying that they, they were. If there's issues here, they, they, those have to be handled between the property owners because we don't have a survey and we're not going to determine those lines anyway. Um, so, and I'm not asking the commission to do that. What I am is so making it clear that I am not sure whether or not they have these two boundaries properly flagged. Okay. I'm throwing that out there mm -hmm. and Christopher and I can meet and we yep. can we make sure that they have it properly flagged. Right. I just want yep. to make clear that they can't, they're not making a decision based upon any of that information only because they can't. Um, they, they can't, they're not making a decision on those things because they don't, we're not looking at surveys. They're not making a determination so, as to they're, they're not approving something based upon a submitted map or not. They're looking at the approximate information on this map. Our, our requirements have limitations for proximity to property line and how what trees ought to be flagged. So if there's a discrepancy, the solution is exactly that to meet in the field. I just want to make it clear that whether he says this map is correct or you do or vice versa, the decision they're making is not now, based upon if, this. So if this proves to be what you're saying is correct and there's an issue here, what happens in the field is going to, to trump what is written here. Does that make sense? Um, it, it kind of makes sense, but what I would say is as part of your determination of the suitability of this application, you have asked Mr. Lemery, did you flag the property lines? Mm -hmm. So you are asking the applicant, did you flag them? I assume you mean, did you flag them properly, correctly, accurately? That's what I'm calling to question here on this one line. I'm not trying to stop your business. I'm just saying there's a question here, okay? As an abutter, as a taxpayer, okay? I walked this line several times this weekend some of the pink flagging looks like it may make sense. Some of it, I really don't know. But I do know two things. I know exactly where these two boundaries are. And if somebody comes along and shoots along that boundary, they can figure out. I know exactly where this is a drill hole in stone, and this is a drill hole in upright stone. I know exactly where they are, and if we can get together and reestablish those so that there's no crossing over of the boundary line, that would be fantastic. And I think Christopher's open to doing that. I just wanted to bring that to the commission's attention. Thank so if, if, if I'm correct in saying that, we're taking the application at face value mm -hmm. from what the applicant has provided to us. So we act on that. If there's a land dispute or something like that, that's between the two property owners? Correct. Because we're you're looking at the activity, you're not looking at the right. The, it's an it's an as of right activity. So you're looking at how they're going to conduct the activity. You're not looking at whether or not there's 20 feet between these trails or those distances that we're not looking at that. Right. Because whether it's 20 feet, 10 feet, five feet, six, it, it's so in many ways moved because it's an as of right activity. The state has said they have to be permitted to conduct those things. Correct. And so that's I'm just. 
the point I was trying to make is that the specific details of these maps, because they're not survey maps and we're only looking at the activity, don't are going to impact, to your point, how the harvest is conducted. Correct. Just a quick question. Is are you the are you Mr. DeMotto? I am. Okay. Does anybody review these applications when they come in for administrative completeness? So they're, they they come before the commission in for review. These activities are as of right. So typically they would be on an agenda for receipt and then the subsequent agenda after that review, they would be on for consideration and the determination. Because I, I believe I looked at the, and this is just a small point and I hate to be nitpicky, but I believe I reviewed the timber harvest regulations and it said that um, along with the letter that should be sent out, a map or a plan of the activity should be sent out. I never got, I did get a letter. I never got the attached plan. And I think that comes right from the, the Wilmington. So what box. did you receive? I received a letter from Mr. Lemery. Yep. You know, stating uh, that, that there would be a hearing, you know, that this meeting would occur. And um, that was that. I'm not saying there was anything lacking in his letter. I'm just saying my understanding is from the from the regs themselves is that a plan should or a map should have been attached. And that's why I asked the question. And yeah, this is what I received. Not whipping it, not we whip, the regulations. Please. Not to whip a dead horse here. I was just curious. Okay. Well, that letter does provide you information that more information can be viewed here at the town offices regarding the application. Yeah, but if the regs say that a you know a letter and a map should or a plan should be included, um, well, anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna write that rules. I think I, I, me and me. Can I just say a word here? Uh, me and Kevin had spoke over email, um, and I had told him before. Um, actually, he just answered me back. I think today um, around noon, um, and, and had agreed to meeting out in the field to find out and uh, compare deeds. I have a deed from Tyler, um, and he has a deed, and it obviously sounds like he knows where a drill hole may be, and you know it may be that he has a different type of evidence in the field and I have a different type of evidence in the field and we just kind of need to match them up and, and agree to move some boundary lines over, maybe agree that it's correct or wrong. Um, so we definitely have, have to set up a time. I had just gotten his email around noon. Um, so we can certainly continue with finding a time to meet and figure out this discrepancy today um it was the is just a meeting about the timber harvest um as a right activity um the boundary lines do need like the town commissioners had said do need to be figured out with both of the landowners themselves this is not their their place to really say anything um there he's correct about the 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 abutters being needing to have a map attached to the letter that's my fault i never sent him a map that might have been i actually there was probably around 21 abutters that i had sent a letters to so maybe it just slipped um so that's my fault he's completely correct on having a map needing a map with the letter itself um so that's my fault but we can certainly set up a time to meet and figure it out in the field okay thank you christopher well i'll uh, i'll give you a call thank you yes thanks kevin so our procedure would be to receive this this evening and act on it later uh, under old business act time or not for the this because it's an as of right activity. Okay, so it comes in and it's yeah, there's not a site right. Right. Okay. Thank you. There's another uh, member of the public speak. Donna Cook, seventy seven Common Road. Um, if you could pull up that map again, I'm seventy seven. I thought I was a direct to butter, but when I looked at it quickly, I may be mistaken. So that's the first thing is before I ask for additional information, because I um, did not receive in the mail. Um, on the back lot, yeah, so that's me. You're not so a you're butter. butter. All right, so I'm not a direct butter, so that eliminates that question. The other question I have is the landing where everything is going to be taken out. Where is that on Common Road in relationship to Mr. Rodriguez's home? 
is it right next to his house? No, it's, no, it's, it's at the far end. It's by the town yeah. green. It, it's it's basically where the road oh, completely ends and pavement ends at that point. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, where you have your little pin. That that's my that's my lot, our lot, my wife and I's. That's see where the little green thingy is. The landing is here. They're gonna come out and come up to Jared Sparks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So anyway, if you're curious, this is the this is the boundary I want to walk over with with Christopher. This one right here. Let's see. So this is our lot, and this is what I want to walk over with Christopher. And the pavement ends about right here. Uh, probably, yeah, probably right here. So this becomes dirt. You have a dwelling on that? Oh. What's that? You have a dwelling on that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so okay. Your access is down Calvin Road. Yes, yes. Uh, the dwelling is like on this corner because, you know, we have the stream. And yeah. So actually, okay. There's something on the other side. There it is, right there. So we, we're the, right now, we're the last house on Common Road. Yeah. But that's going to change as far as I'm sorry. <laughs> you know. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to wrap this. Oh, Ralph? Go ahead. Okay. Just trying to uh, shed some light on this whole situation with the map that was provided with the application. It appears to me that that map was derived from uh, an image grabbed off of Google Maps. It shows Common Road as a straight line. Well, uh, the portion on the right uh, to the east on the harvest map is not Common Road. There's nothing that exists there. The, um, the boundary line along the southeast corner, the squiggly line, actually follows the old common road and is consistent with the GIS map that I have access to. So I, I don't think there's a dispute over that squiggly line boundary. I think that the real concern is the straight line portion uh, that Mr. Rodriguez is concerned about. Am I correct? Yes, that's, that's understood, but we have no jurisdiction over that route. I understand that. I understand that. I'm just trying to clarify. I think there was a uh, there was a mistake in grabbing a Google map image. Correct. To Correct. Use it's gonna be worked, that's all. It's going to be worked out by the by the two property owners. Okay. We're, not, we're not here to dispute the property line. We're here to to act on the timber harvest application. I understand. That's all going to be yep. sorted out with the property owners. The, the the so the map was actually created using QGIS, which is a mapping software, and the boundaries were completely taken from the town website. And it's a it's a layer that comes straight off the town's GIS into QGIS to make the map. The map actually straight indicates that this is not a survey map, but is a map to use for be to be used for forest management purposes, as you see there next to the legend. All fun and good. Uh, all I was trying to do was add some clarity. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. I forgot you were there. Uh, not that I'm trying to be unneighborly or anything, but um, yeah, I'm willing to work this out. But I, uh, you know, as part of the commission, um, I would hope that you folks have some say in determining if boundaries are correct when someone comes into you with an application and says, we've flagged the boundaries. I would hope some question is raised or there's some part of the review process where you folks determine or something that those boundaries were actually marked accurately. And so I have when, I, we get, yeah. when we get an application, we take it as face value from what the applicant has presented to us. So we're not gonna have the time or anything like that to go out and actually, we're not land surveyors, so, we're just taking the applicant for their word based on this because this is their legal documentation coming to us that we're going to act on. So if they're they're they don't if they don't do their activity according to their application, then that opens them up for any litigation. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, and through the state's requirements, we can't make them 
survey the property before they begin as a as an application requirement. Some of these parcels are 300 acres. And so we have the 15 foot marking requirement because that is an, sort of an assumed level of accuracy that they, they can get down to 15 feet, those trees are marked. And there would be an understanding at that point if there's a discrepancy between those, the understanding of where the property line is. If there is a discrepancy and there's, a, there's an absolute need to take those trees down for some reason, then it would certainly be prudent for the person who owns the property the harvest being conducted on to know where that property line is by having a surveyor located or, or whatever, um, rather than saying, well, you know, I've got an approval. Because again, all they're doing is reviewing an activity that has already been determined by the state to be as of right. So they're looking at the operation, but they're not certifying any of these technical aspects, um, which is why we can't make any certifying statements about where the, the property lines are or are not. You you mentioned you used the word litigation just out of curiosity. Who would who would well, any sort of enforcement or anything like that? Like if they started or trespass or trespass. Okay. Who would who would initiate it? The litigation the, the person that was wrong, right? Well the person that if 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 there was an operation and they ended up trespassing, then it would be the person who owned the property that was trespassed on would be the one taking issue with okay. it. It would be a private matter between two property owners. Property owners. Right. And I threw out that word just because no, I'm not great with words, but no. I mean, <laughs> and, and just one other quick question. The 15 foot you mentioned, can you just explain what that applies to exactly? There's a 15, any tree within 15 feet of a property line is marked. Okay. So he indicated for harvest. He has flat, he, he's got flags. I can't remember which was which. He's got flags and he's got orange paint. I think the trees to be taken are orange paint and flags are property line. Okay. So it's, it's within 15 feet of the property line. Nothing's to be cut. Is that what you're saying or am within I confused? Trees to be cut will be marked in orange. Okay. The property boundary is I think he said flagged, right, Chris? You you mentioned flagging and, and orange paint. I just can't remember which. You... Yep, yep. So the the trees to be marked to be removed will be what were marked with orange paint, um, and the po property boundary was marked with pink flagging. Um, and kind of just to to dis escalate this a little bit more. Um, me and, like they had said, Kevin, me and you can meet out and in the field this the only way to really figure it out is to be in the field you said you sounds like you have two points on both of the corners we can shoot a compass together and figure out the boundary together and move some stuff if need be um there's no there's no point into having cutting two trees um just because it's right on the boundary or something like that you know we can we can just make sure that we put a no on those trees and making sure that they're not marked if there is any at all marked on your property. Um, but I am almost 100% sure that I had followed the, the deed to a T um, and the map that was provided through the GIS that was provided through the town of Willington. Yeah, well, I already know the GIS map for our lot is incorrect. The town's map, which I discussed with every the town. Every town's GIS is is never right. I mean, it's 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 it. Uh, there's so many properties that are in these towns that it's that they can't really keep track of it a lot. You know, and a lot of these towns and a lot of these properties don't exactly have hard boundaries. I mean, these are old. It's old farmland. You know, so you just kind of go got to go off of old evidence in the field as long as well as evidence that the town has and deeds uh, relate to. And say things like you know, drill holes and and uh, tags and trees and and uh, Virginia rail fences and stone walls and stuff like that. It's really you know a lot of towns don't have hard definitive um, boundary lines, and that's just that's just really the matter of it. It's, it's honestly it's it's part of my it's one of the difficulties of my job to actually kind of work with the towns, kind of updating stuff, but it's just, it's a lot of stuff. So you got to kind of expect the town GIS to be a little wrong and a little off. Yeah, I, I didn't see any Virginia rail fence out there. My guess is any, it's probably turned to compost by now. 
But, yes. Um, yep. I'd like to make a motion to approve timber harvest application 20H24-6. Selected timber harvest at 10 Jar Jared Sparks Road, map block lot 23-025-00, owner T. Hall, applicant C. Lemery. Um, as presented in the application materials, uh, Connecticut Deep Forestry Best Management Practices will be used. They will use a, uh, a timber bridge mat for the intermittent stream crossing. Um, there are other things in here uh, regarding post harvest um, uh, stabilization with use of water bar seed and or hay uh, to, to limit erosion and soil disturbance. Uh, and I think that's it. David, do you have anything else or any other commissioners? Any conditions on this? I understand that I, I can't put a condition on this. It would be nice to condition it on the uh, truth of the value. Do I have a second on the uh, motion? I'll second it. I have, a Any uh, I have a condition. Hmm? Sure. I think the sensible condition for this commission is that the boundary between Rodriguez property and the uh, Hall property um, be established to the satisfaction of both parties before any cutting commences. Is that reasonable, Mike, or is that beyond our jurisdiction? If they ultimately don't agree on the location of the property line, we can't stop the activity so they just want people to harvest in that area i, I think, think it's that i think it's a neighborly request to add you all don't agree with that's fine but i think it's appropriate it's jurisdictional we don't have any jurisdictional ruling over that we can ask the two parties to agree can't we they i think did. they already have ralph okay They've, all I'm they've, for. they've been very reasonable. We've agreed to look strike strike that condition from the. Is there any further discussion? Abstentions. All in favor. Aye. 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 David. Yeah. Somewhat reluctant. Next order of business, uh, Emma Metlin's application 24 13. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, 2414, request for jurisdictional ruling associated with selected timber harvest at 10 Jared Sparks Road, Matt Block Lot 23 025 00, owner T. Hall, applicant C. Lemery. Make motion to approve the application as a right uh, as of right activity. I'll take that. Any further discussion? No. Attentions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next order of business in the Wentz application 24-13 request for modification to previously issue permit. W2017-18 at Zero River Road, Map Block Lot, 19-003-08. Owner and Phillips, African Peterson. Uh, am, am, am I good to leave, everybody? You are good to are go, good? Christopher. Yes. Thank you, yeah, Mark. Thanks very much. Yes, thank you, Mark. I mean, yeah, just give me a little second, I'll pull it up. It's Mike. For the record, Mark Peterson, professional engineer with Gardner and Peterson Associates, speaking for property owner, uh, Mike Phillips. Uh, while Mike's pulling that up, the uh, property is located on River Road, uh, 225 River Road. If you're at the intersection of 74 and 32, you're going to have south on uh, 32, approximately a mile, you know, the west side of the road. Property is a 2.86 acre uh, rear lot. Uh, this 
I was here before this board. It looks like it's been about seven years now where we had received the permit in the past for nearly identical improvements. So we're here this evening to ask for a modification to that permit. We've made some adjustments to the house location uh, and other site utilities. Do you want me to pull up the current plan or the 2017 plan? Um, why don't we start with the 2017 plan just to show them what it how it was approved. No, actually. Things are just not working today. There's, we operate on three different Wi-Fi signals and this there's no priority given to this stuff. And so with a meeting going on upstairs, it's just oh like, there's a meeting at Parks and Rec. I'm gonna drew out when you when you can. <laughs> we're more we're more <laughs> poor we try Parks and Rec. This is the 2017 plan. I can speak to that. Um, so River Road is on the right side of the plan, yeah. north of Strata. Uh, we have a driveway proposed coming down the hill through the access strip. Uh, makes a hard, hard left-hand turn to a proposed two-bedroom house with a front entry garage. All the way to the left, you'll see where it says parcel B, Around that, uh, that sits within a pond. I believe that's a man made pond. Uh, the wetlands were field delineated at that time by certified soil scientist Rick Zulick, and there's an outlet to the south end of the pond. Uh, the upland review area uh, follows along the back of the porch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Point that's this. Line here coming down behind the home. Here's the notation 100 foot up the review area, and then cuts through the proposed primary and extends to the south property line. Uh, so, this plan was approved. Uh, a, long, a lot of time has passed. My client has obtained some DOT permits, He's put in, modified a guardrail. There's a, enough room to get a car safely off the road today, uh, but he's getting closer to construction and he's providing me a slightly different house plan. So, Mike, if you could pull up the current uh, plan, I can show you some of the differences. It really fits down to the garage. Uh -huh. So, the original plan had a main level garage that you saw coming in from the east. Uh, now we have a basement level garage, which gives him a little more floor space on the main level of the home. So coming down the driveway, nothing has changed. And instead of turning to the east of the house, it's a little less sharp of a turn. I pulled the house down the page to the south and the septic system down the page to provide me that length to get into the basement elevation. The driveway length hasn't changed a lot because it used to come on the high side and turn in. Um, but I had to pull that south and redesign the septic system. So the septic system is actually a little smaller footprint. I changed that from a stone leaching trench to a plastic infiltrator product. A um, little, little smaller footprint there. Uh, we do have... Uh, Sedimentation and eroding controls on the plant. So we have a double dash line here of silt fence and hay bales down gradient of our site disturbance running in a generally north south direction. Um, we also have details in plan view for silt fence, hay bales, seating schedules, stockpile areas, which is shown on the plan. And this plan has also been approved for the Eastern Highlands Health District. So that'll be your limited service, the, the ENS. Correct. 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 So all the grading will be conducted uh, east of that? If the east to the right of the uh, well, Sterling. Correct. What was the. Um, 
So this is uh, for proposed changes. The, when, when did the other application expire for the approval? So it's not expired because of the COVID extensions, okay. but it's a modification that I can't approve as the agent. Gotcha. What do you see as the impact of the modification? So I don't believe we can go back in between. There's really, there's, it's, a, it's a minimal change in where the limit of disturbance is. I don't know what the, what the dimension is. We could probably figure it out, but here it's kind of angled in, in, the, in the proposed plan, it kind of comes down through. Dropped it a little bit down the hill. Right, but it's not, um, you know, there's still a significant disportion of the upland review area. Uh, it's probably 60 feet. I don't know, Mark would be able to eyeball it better than me, but it's it probably much. yeah, 60 feet to the silt fence and hay bale between the uh, two, between the actual the wetland, wetland at that point where your arrow is. And actually, this new plan gives the the adjacent property owner a little bit more kind of buffer. From where you had the original driveway coming in right along the property line right there too yeah 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 we did try to keep the house as far east as we can to stay away from the wetlands but yes that driveway is getting moved a little farther from homeowner above us fortunately they're they're pretty far up the hill the homeowner close to uh, river road but they do have a large open backyard we're bringing the car in underneath the house. Yes. Right, and on the new one, does that mean that the house is sitting up higher with respect to the land? It works out well for a walkout basement and basement garage in terms of topography. Uh, there's about six feet of cross slope throughout that shaded sure. house box. So by the time you pick up the top of the wall, two feet, it blends in pretty good for a lower level. It looks like the uh, it's pretty similar. Uh, the top of the wall on this one is 181. I think it's the same. Yeah, it's been a half foot. The top of the wall is about this, it's almost exactly the same as the previous. The new plan looks a lot more attractive, I think. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> yeah, the other one looks more like a box. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's put a little more thought into this now and has some architectural plans and a nice porch on the back. Why are you limiting it to two bedrooms? That's all he wants. That's all he's asked for. Yeah. And the septic system that is designed accordingly. Yes. Okay. And no, but that's just a, a deck and porch. So that's pretty much not like a Building. No, no, I realize that. The, yeah. it's, there's nothing underneath that. It's, they're just sitting yeah. up on pilings, probably. Nice view. It looks right over the Willamette River. That's yeah. true. Were any sense that that pond had anything to do with gravel removal in its history? Oh, I don't know. Because no, all along there, that's an aquifer. Okay. Uh, and that's the basis of the night um, gravel operation. This is, I think, farther down the stream, isn't it? I don't think they would have gotten too much material out of there. Seems like they would have taken a lot more, made that pond a lot bigger if that was. Yeah, their goal to get grabbed. No, that's why it's a lot of wondering. It's just interesting. For what it's worth, I remember walking this property to split that rear lot off of uh, two nineteen River when I was on planning and zoning. <laughs> How'd you like it? It's another rear lot. As long as you're prepared for beachfront property in another uh, half a century. <laughs> Yep. 
dead on the Little Valley River. It's going to be a gnarly driveway, though, in a snowstorm. Yeah, it's deep end down there. We've got some work to do. It's just another one we received and have to act on it in subsequent we years. We received it last meeting. Yes. Oh, we did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dromney, any questions for the applicant or Mr. Tulis? I have no questions. I have no problem with this one. No, it looks fine. Make a motion to approve Illinois application 24 13 request for modification to re previously issued permit W2017 18 at Zero River Road, map block lot 19 003 0A. Owner M. Phillips, applicant M. Peterson, as presented in the new proposed uh, construction plan. I'll thank you there. Is there any further discussion? No, nothing. Mentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Well, we'll thank you. It. <laughs> Moving right along. No new old business to receive. Next is correspondence loves Q2. So I didn't print it because it's really long, but we you know we are we are provided with the uh, quarterly groundwater monitoring report by Trust Money as required as part of the permit. So that's all through June. All right, thanks. Yeah, let me um I can so I can send it's it's posted through the um, online through the agenda, um, but I can I'm happy to send any you know a, a link to it or or if we want a copy of it we can print it out. Um, Is there any groundwater after this last four weeks? <laughs> I went over the Connecticut River and you can start to see all the sandbars and all that now. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, I think just like a, an online link. Is that okay with the rest of the commissioners? Yeah, they want to review the report at their leisure. Online link would be fine for me. Okay. Sounds I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, that more. sounds good. Kathy DeMars so, would be some, able to access that. So some light. Uh, it's online already if you go through the agenda. Okay, um, but yeah, we can. We can post that's going to look at it. I don't believe there's been anything really alarming with their. Unless they've had some sort of underground lease, which probably not. no, it's it's um yeah, it's got all the tables and Isn't that what most down in a different realm. Yeah, no, I, it everything seems in order. Um, yeah, I haven't seen anything. I haven't had any issues. We get spill reports sent to us if they occur, and I haven't I haven't seen any. Um, so I think we're. We're in okay shape, at least for now. But um, yeah, we'll we'll post it so that it's more accessible. All right. Next item on the agenda: uh, staff report and discussion. Uh, the only uh, let me just go get to the Um, I think we talked about this at the last meeting, but I, I can't remember. You know, I can mention it again. Obviously, it's an annual thing, but the um, cause. What cause? No, it's the um, Kakiwick annual conference. And we talked about how last meeting it's in the budget. We have oh, money yeah, of folks yeah. want to attend. So just reminding again, it's in November. Um, so if you're interested in going, is it on a Saturday? Uh, let me tell you the date. Well, it's November 16th, which is a Saturday. Yeah. So if anybody is interested in going, let us know. We'll get you registered and paid for, et cetera. Um, going, yeah, it's in Bristol. Usually a good lunch, guys. You get free lunch. <laughs> so just put that in your... Okay. Tuck that away for later if you change, you know, if you've got money to send you if you want to go. Um, 
that something you or Evelyn would want to attend? It's it's the Connecticut Association of Conservation and Inland Wetland Commissions. Okay. So I I mean the the topics are uh, so it's keynote is Judge Berger Marshall Berger. He was for a million years the land use circuit judge. He's now retired and he works at Pullman Conley. Deputy Speaker Mary Mashinsky and Jason White, who's the director of the Agriculture Experiment Station. And I'm really saying what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, I, guess anybody, I guess we could all go carpool if you really wanted to. Sweet. I don't know if I'll be going, but uh, I'll leave Eve on the table for Evelyn to go or Peggy or any of you guys. Yeah, I'll see what my schedules. I don't like. You have, I mean, I don't know if we have any applications, but it, I don't know that we'll, by the time we meet again in October, if we do, there, it may be closed. It doesn't say now when. Yeah. yeah. So just keep that in mind. I gotta let the rest of the, the rest of the commissioners know that I was at a um, soil and sediment erosion day um, that was put on by the Southern New England Soil Conservation um, Organization, and Nick Zito was there and presented some of uh, the forestry stuff and uh, gave kudos to Wellington for our awesome forestry regulations. Mm -hmm. There you go. Good to know. Next time on the agenda, public comment. Is there anyone in the public that would wish to comment? It's here tonight. Okay, Mark, you're on. Look like it. Hey, um, we'll let Ralph do it this time. No, Mark, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> you all all right. Don't don't bicker amongst yourselves, please. <laughs> I uh, make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're not all. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Evelyn. Have a good night.